Hello my friends, welcome to an exciting episode in our Photoshop design series. In this video, I'll be showing you how I created this flyer inside of Photoshop. Yes, even as a beginner, you can follow through with this video. And let's not forget, if you've not gotten your Smart Designer Premium Assets, this is the right time for you to purchase yours. If not subscribed to my channel now, is the best time to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the videos I'll be dropping anytime from now. Without having to say much, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is click on File and click on New. So I'm just going to change this, put the name here. And um, it's very simple. It's just going to be Social Media Flyer like this. So my width and height um, sound cool. So my width and height stays at 5 by 5 inches, please. And resolution stays at 300. Every other thing stays the same and click OK. Right, so um, I kind of documented the background and everything I'm going to use. So I have the color codes here. So for the background, I'm going to start background, copy this and um, click on this and click on solid color. Right. And I'm just going to impute this for the background and click OK. Right. So when you do that, um, this is the background. The next thing we want to get is um, these guys here. I'll show you how to use them. So I'm going to copy this one for the top. I'm going to go over to my rectangle. I'm going to select the ellipse tool. I'm going to draw the ellipse like this. Make sure it's flat like this, like a flat surface. All right. So when you draw it like a flat surface like this, what you should do is um, we have this color, but it's not visible. Turn this off by hiding this. And this is what we have. Right. So uh, I'm just going to change the color with what I used originally. But if I do that, I duplicate this Ctrl J and bring this down. Hold Shift so it doesn't go out of place. So what you should do next is click on this, click on the rectangle tool this time. You might want to zoom closer so you are doing the right thing. And um, when you see this line, this one here, yes, and you know you are at the right point. So um, let's differentiate these um, shapes now. So I'm just going to bring this one and uh, make sure the one that is on top, this one stays on top. So I'm just going to drag it up. That's what I'm doing. Basically dragging everything up like this. Double click on this. And so your color picker comes up and this is the color you should use for it. Where it says top here. So copy all of this, 360000 and um, paste it here and click OK. So this is the top, right? Good. So now that you have this, you have um, a difference, a different sheet. So we can go on. I'm going to make this lighter. Click OK. Right. So when you do this, the next thing you should do is um, let's see, we have this in place. So let's turn this on back. And uh, um, we don't have that nice blend. So um, it's quite simple. What we're going to do next now. So we're not going to touch the top. You can, we're just going to focus on this. So double click on this one first, double click on it. And we're just going to move to a lighter part. Double click on this one, which is the one below and select this color. When the color picker comes up, this one, you can see it's now the same color, right? So when I go on to turn this on, you can see that it's now balanced, right? Great. So you now have a balanced podium. If that's what you call this. So create a new layer under the background. And um, this is the color you should use. Use something very dark. Um, I'm not mindful of the color actually of the color code. Just use something dark already. So make sure your brush size is like this when you weigh it on this. And um, make sure your flow is set to 100. Click twice. And Ctrl T to bring this down like this. Okay. And uh, move this in place here and uh, make it slightly bigger. I'm holding down the Alt key while I'm making this bigger. And um, move it closer like this, like this. Okay. Yes. You're good to go this way. Okay. And um, 
that's perfect um, this way okay so um what you want to do is select all of them and um, i'm just going to move, move them downwards like this so it's not too close to the top um what i'm going to do next is let me see i want to make this a little bit darker and um yeah i think this is nice click ok and um, do the same thing for the other one which is this one here select it double click on it when the color picker comes use the eyedropper to select the color there and yeah so you now have a balanced 3d environment right where you have the lighter ones on top and the darker ones below right so this is how it should be so duplicate this one which is the shadow we used and move it to the top like this um manually ctrl t bring this up like this and uh, resize it make it smaller just like this and what you should do next is reduce the opacity like this make sure it's not too much somewhere around here is cool and uh, it's um, nice enough okay so this is nice um now let's um um make things more interesting um click create a new layer and uh, make sure your foreground color is a red color the main red go over to your brush make sure your flow is set to 100 and um, you might want to zoom out and twice here and this angle twice also just the way i could mine right so um you should change your blend mode also to screen yes screen so for all your lightings is either you use any of the light modes like this okay good so this is uh, minimal and this would support what we want to use it for so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in the product itself which is the airport like this and um, i'm going to position this here like this and what you should do is make this smaller so it's not too big um, it's not bigger than the podium itself so um reduce rotate like this and um, so it has this angle make sure it's below the highlights that we just created right it's not on top but below the highlights so it blends well with the highlights right so uh for this one i'm going to increase the opacity which is a shadow on top of the podium and for the airport i'm going to move it down a bit so it touches the podium a little bit but it's still suspended you get right so that's um that's the beauty of it so we kind of make it slightly bigger like this and yeah you're good to go move it upward so that the shadow is visible okay so um as you can see now this ear pod is not blending well with the environment so a couple of things we want to do but the first one is go over to filter go over to camera raw filter and let's make this image pop yeah you guess right so um while it loads up don't forget that this um, the these images are in the description of this video just do well click the link and download it so inside of the camera raw i'm just going to add texture to it you can copy my settings i'm going to add the age to it and i'm also going to add clarity to it in these proportions right another thing i want to do is let me adjust this this should be at 11 and um, reduce the highlights like this and increase the shadows and um, also increase the contrast when you're done click ok like this and boom voila now you have a popped image right so that's not all so to make it even more interesting click on this adjustment layer and click on hue and saturation now before you go ahead to make an adjustment make sure you clip it to the image itself right so right click on it and click on create clipping mask like this right so what you should do now is click on colorize as the first thing you can see it's making sense but this is not what we want to achieve so what you want to do is increase the saturation while the it's at red right and um, what you want to do is ctrl i to invert it right ctrl i to invert it clicking on the mask yes inverted so go over to the brush because we don't want that effect on the entire image now your flow shouldn't go above 50 percent right 
so now what you want to do is go over to the edges and paint that hue and saturation which is the red paint it on the body like this and yeah now this is the light that is reflecting on the airport itself now for areas like this where i did mistake you can invert this what i mean invert it you can invert it make make sure your foreground color is black and paint areas that you don't want invert back and paint light to the areas you want to see light just like this right good so um i'm going to have on these areas and good now i'm going to create another layer i'm going to use this for the dodge and bond process i'm going to use curves this time so again create a mask and i'm going to increase this is the light um for highlights i'm going to increase this right and of course heavy highlights you have red inside because we're working on red environment red lighting scene so i'm going to red channel and i'm going to bump up the red like this is something you don't see every day so you see those posters that come out nice and good there's a whole lot of work that goes through it right so invert it and i'm only going to uh paint on areas that should have that light effect right now the light effect areas that light would naturally hit which is these edges here that we have already i'm just going to lighten up this whole place not the entire image right so that's why you always have to invert and just use it on areas that needs it okay so um this light region you can see how it made that area bright enough good so i'm going to do the next one now this one is for burn so it's just going to be the shadow part of this image so i'm just going to bring this down i'm not going to add extra colors i'm not going into the color um sections i'm just going to bring this um down invert this ctrl i to invert it and go over to your brush and start painting the shadows like i'll start here at shadows start here even at this base point you have shadows shadows on this part here shadows shadows here you can see that my flow is still set to 50. um the harder i press and don't forget i'm using a mouse i'm not using a wacom tablet or anything so it's not you don't have to use a wacom tablet for you to do to um, make your compositions actually stand out right in as much as you know how to control your blush did i say blush your brush flow yeah so that's it so you have this um nice place so i'm just going to click um and um this is what um i'm just going to improvise and do things like this i'm going to add little bits of glow effects using my brush and i'm just going to do that here so it's like it has this kind of like dreamy effect all over this part here but it's little dots that looks like something like shining so i'm just going to have them here i'm just going to stay creative with this and um over here over here you can also make your brush 100 percent at this point right for these lights but i choose to make mine 50. so i just have this here right so you can actually do this also and change the blend, blend mode to screen. Why am I saying blend lately? Blend mode to screen. Okay, so um, yeah. And you can duplicate this to make it pop more. Just like this. Right? Great. So when this is done, the next thing I want to do is go over to my resource file and bring in my text. And um, the typeface or the font I use for this is Asenica. So you can... If you downloaded, um, if you've gotten the premium design asset, the, this font is inside of that asset. So you can get yours and um, have assets to all these fonts, all these backgrounds, and all these templates that I often use in my designs, right? So if you're not gotten yours, you don't know what you're actually missing at this point. So I'm just going to click on a mask to conceal some of these parts here because I don't want it to get in the way of um the text that i brought in so i'm just going to clean it off clean it off clean it off like this and um yeah 
this is what I want alone. Right? Good. So having done this, I'm just going to click on color balance and I'm just going to do a few things on the shadows. I'm just going to go over to plus eight to make it more realistic. All right, for highlights, I'm going to tilt towards the um, red. And for, I'm just going to tilt towards this angle like this right great so um at the end of the day this is what i have and now we we'll all arrived at this if you've liked this video if you've liked this session and um, you want to see more kindly hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the like button so that youtube would refer these videos to other people like yourself that will need this video if you've not gotten your smart design premium assets it's still very much available and if you've not subscribed please kindly hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the post notification so you'll be aware anytime i drop any new video i love you